week's live workshop on academic writing. Have you had any formal training on academic writing? Because if you haven't, this session is going to be invaluable for you. We're going to cover the training that I wish I would have had as a graduate student. Because perhaps like many of you, I was never taught anything in writing. I was just expected to figure it out for myself. And really, that's a terrible way to proceed. Uh, and I want to give you an analogy of playing tennis. So uh, I'm you know, when I grew up, there were some tennis courts near the house where I lived. Got a tennis racket and just hit balls around with friends. And I, I thought it was pretty decent uh, until I kind of got to school and other students just mopped the floor with me because they had learned how to play tennis properly. And uh, you know, many of you I talked to in, in the group, in the community, by the way, if you haven't joined our Facebook group already, uh, do because you're going to find lots of valuable training, including this on, on writing. Um, but um, what had happened is those students had had actual tennis training, and I didn't really know what I didn't know. And if I had never learned how to play tennis properly, so the mechanics were all wrong, the fundamentals were not in place, and I was never able to improve. And it's only when I got the basics right that it kind of unleashed uh, a torrent of productivity. And, and fast forward from a grad student to where I am now, I've published over 400 papers in peer-reviewed journals. I've been a, a tenured faculty member at Oxford University. Now I'm at University of Bocconi, Milan. And I created this support group, Fast Track, specifically to help you to tackle some of the most common challenges that I see so many researchers fall into. I really want to, and I'm truly committed uh, to trying to help you get on the fast track. So what I'm going to do today, you're going to get immediate academic writing training that you can implement today in your writing. I'm going to teach you our peer system, which is kind of the those tennis bread and butter mechanics. If you want to play good tennis, you have to learn how to hit a serve. You have to learn how to hit a forehand. Uh, the peer system is that bread and butter system for writing. You need to know it. You need to master it. I'm going to give you some simple tests of your writing that you can apply. Uh, to your writing and to test if your writing is on point and following the peer system. That's going to help you feel confident and smooth in, in your writing, applying the simple test. We're going to actually look at research papers where I'm going to show you the peer writing system in practice. And uh, to, to continue, I'm going to look at an example uh, helpfully shared with me by a student I've been working with this week that did not follow the peer system. And we're going to look together so that you can feel confident in seeing how could you take a piece of writing and start applying elements of the peer system to make it clearer and more coherent. And if you get this right, you're going to find your writing is simple and easy. And this is especially important if you're not a native uh, English speaker. We've got a lot of students from developing countries really love that, committed to open access. Um, and so if that's you, you especially, especially need to do even more to get this right. Um, one thing, while uh, I'm here, do those of you who are tuning in along uh, for the, this peer system session, I'm going to go uh, into Google Scholar later and pick out some research articles that we can look to see the peer writing system in practice. So if there are any topics you would like to see, post that in the comments uh, here in the chat, and uh, we'll look at uh, some example papers that are directly relevant to you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let me uh, take this caption off. And uh, I want to introduce to you what this peer system is all about, why it's so important, and how you can use it in your academic writing. And, and really, the peer system is going to give us um, and, and tell you uh, the anatomy of a good paragraph, which is kind of the nuts and bolts and components of your writing. So let me uh, move this out of the way and make sure I'm still on the microphone here without the breaking keyboard. Good. You can all see the screen. If not, uh, yell at me. So, uh, peer. This is really going to give you the anatomy of a paragraph. And sometimes it's described as a hamburger model. Um, and this is me trying to draw kind of a hamburger bun, uh, two, two parts of a bun. And inside the bun, you have all sorts of good stuff. Uh, you know, uh, it might have some meat, unless you're, you're vegan. So this is my attempt to draw meat. You might have a piece of cheese on there. And maybe some tomatoes and other stuff. So okay, uh, you know, there's there's obviously some artistic creativity going on here, but uh, you get the idea of a hamburger. And um, the, this is each element of your paragraph is what we're going to describe by the peer system. And so peer, the P in peer is for a a point, and um, that's going to be the big point that uh, you 
want to make with your paragraph. I'm going to come back to that. Your E is going to be for um, 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 basically evidence or examples. And um, the next E is going to be for explanation. And your R, some people like to have an L here, but I, I like an R, is going to be to repeat um, and or a linking sentence to your next paragraph. And this really is setting out the anatomy uh, of a paragraph. And so I think of it like a hamburger because your, your paragraph is like this bite-sized burger. And at the top, the first thing you got to do in this burger is you got to make your point. And then all your meat and good stuff, tasty stuff inside the burger is in there. That's kind of your evidence and your explanation backing up that point. And then at, at the end here of your bun, you got this repeating or linking section that's going on to your your next paragraph or kind of your, your, your next hamburger that's going to be down here. Um, and so, so how does this work? So there, there are a few components to unpack here that, that are going to be relevant for you. So packed into this peer system, there's actually a lot uh, going on. Um, so point. There's only one point. Each paragraph needs to make one point. We're not dealing with three hamburgers in a paragraph, which is something I see very, very commonly happen. Each paragraph, one point. And that point is the first thing that your paragraph needs to point out. It's sometimes also another way, this is sometimes called this one point, called the one point rule associated with peer, is sometimes called a topic sentence. Really important to get this right. Um, so that, that's kind of this top end of your bun here. Um, and then you're going to think of yourself stuffing this burger to justify this point, to back up all this point. That's where all this meat or good stuff is going to turn rainbow now. Uh, all this good stuff in here, it, it, you're going to then stuff into your paragraph, to, but it needs to be linked to explaining or justifying that main point of that paragraph, and only that one point. And then your repeating or linking is really going to help you bridge. It's kind of, in, in, I'll show you some examples of this to reinforce that point and to help glide, take your reader to, to kind of drive into the next point in your argument, in your structure, into the next point that you're going to make. So I want to take some examples of literature to show you this model in practice and highlight in paragraphs, in scientific papers, um, how this looks. Um, and if you guys have any questions about this, uh, let me know. It, it's really profound when you get it. It will change your writing tremendously. Um, but it's going to take some time to master. It's not like you're going to start using peer and then suddenly overnight you're going to be Roger Federer. You're you're going to need to start getting these mechanics in place. And, and the first way to start that is to be aware of them. Uh, and um, that, that awareness is really the key uh, to improving your learning. So um, if you don't have any suggestions for a topic area that you'd like us to look into, I'm just going to go grab uh, something that comes out. Um, here, here we go. Uh, let me make sure I can actually get access to the article. But let's see. Here's one that's suggested to me. Let's see if I can get access to it, to the PDF. And then we can uh, zoom in on the PDF. Great. Okay. There's the first paper that popped up for me. And let's look at it in practice. Okay. I'd like to get a typeset paper um, because this is a pre-proof. Let me go get a typeset paper because it's going to be a little bit easier to see. Um, so let's just do something on unemployment and health. Something simple like this. Let's do something relatively recent and try to get a good paper. So, nope, that's that's not going to be the paper we want. That's this, here's a systematic review. A lot of you are doing systematic reviews, so this, this could be pretty nice. Here we go. So this, this, uh, this looks pretty good. Okay. And there, there are actually, one interesting thing you're going to find is that sometimes uh, papers don't fully uh, follow the peer system. That, that's okay but you want to learn the basics before you start to deviate from them um so uh okay so let, let's go ahead and look at uh, um the papers and see how these are, are packed in um and and actually this is an example i'm kind of glad i picked this because this isn't really that uh well written in the introduction it's it's very hard to follow because it doesn't have a topic sentence so this is an example of, and you're going to find this in some papers you look at. The screen is blurry. Let me try to zoom in here. You're going to find this in some papers that are really hard to follow. And you'll find, as you read, some papers are easy to read, some are hard to read. And, and that depends what they've done. If you, you look at this here, this is not really uh, an easy paragraph to follow. Um, because they just say, 
that this topic sentence is basically telling us the point that P in the peer is that this paragraph is going to be about this study. And that the, the paragraph does deliver on that study. Um, and the same thing here. This paragraph said, the point here says, I'm going to tell you in this paragraph about this study. And that they examine the effects of unemployment and well-being across 104 empirical studies. And so what's the, the rest going to do? It's going to be evidence and explanation to justify that point. And you can see at the end on the study, they're linking or repeating sentence here. I hope we can all see it now. I'm going to try to zoom in even more so you can see it. So point here is telling us about the study. Evidence, explanation here, meat of of that telling us well okay what did, what did they do when they evaluated the in this case the effect of unemployment on well-being and then this repeating or linking sentence which is helping drive the reader in this part we're in the introduction they're trying to drive us to the gap what is the big gap um and that's what the point this paragraph is, is structured as uh so uh for example here it's they've got the same structure um that this is the topic sentence it's going to tell us about this this study and you can do this with, with um, all, all the paragraphs. So here, for example, um, let's look at another paragraph. I'm going to come here to the right side. This is now going to tell us this topic sentence. What is this topic sentence promising us this paragraph is going to do? This uh, is going to tell us the, the, this key distinction in the literature between these two kinds of effects of unemployment. And what's it then going to do? Well, it's going to go through and explain them. So an exposure effect here. And it's going to start, it's going to give an example of what, what that is, and it's, it's explaining it and what the issues are. Um, and, and then get to a linking part that's going to get right into what their study is trying to do by talking about the gaps. Um, so all, all paragraphs are really going to follow the same kind of basic structure. Um, and you'll find in good writing uh, that you can really grasp quickly and understand easily uh, the peer system is in place and, and is very, very clear. Let me let me pull out a couple other examples. And again, if there's a, a type of topic that you would like to see that you would find particularly helpful, I'm really happy to pull something up there. Let's uh, let me go to the British Medical Journal and see if I can pull up something uh, from their recent research. Uh, let's go to a re research paper, and um, here we go. Um, this looks pretty cool. Racial bias and reproducibility and pulse oximetry. Okay. Okay, okay, I like this. This is a little bit easier to see. So this is nice. This is nice. Okay. So let's do a, a paragraph here. Um, so really this this topic sentence is this. And this this is the point that um, there's this growing interest in enthusiasm and technology, but there's many gaps. In the application of existing data and you see that's the point this this is a topic sentence it can be topic sentences um you could this could be one sentence i like that they've split it up into two it's easier to follow but this is the point of the paragraph this is the whole point and the one that what's going to happen next they're going to explain they're going to give ev they're giving evidence and they're explaining um and now you see this thus they're coming here and they're kind of synthesizing this repeating it and in getting to helping drive right next to what is the next kind of hamburger in the model, the next paragraph that you're going to follow up with, which which is this gap. So in this paragraph of the introduction, there again, we're just looking at an introduction as an example. They're trying to roll out the red carpet for the next paragraph, which is to say, right there, there, there are these there are these gaps here, and synthesize what's needed, and now we're going to do what's needed. So I hope you're starting to see this in practice. That's the P and the R elements of the peer model. I find the, the meat of the hamburger is often the easiest, the, the, these points of the evidence and examples, because you have that. You have the corroborating evidence. Often I, I find students are not struggling so much to find what to stuff the hamburger with. The errors and the common challenges they're running into is trying to make put several hamburgers together into one, and it's kind of like a, a monstrous Big Mac. It's it's not tasty. You don't want it, and it's very hard to follow. So I, I do think for good writing, uh, let's look at an, another sentence. I mean, th this will go straight throughout um, the the paragraph. Uh, every paragraph is going to follow the system. This study had several limitations. Very simple topic sentence, right? What what is that topic sentence promising us that this paragraph is going to? I'm going to try to zoom in again. I uh, hope you can see it. There we go. Right, what is this paragraph promising? 
this paragraph is promising that it's going to deliver um, evidence and examples of the study's limitations. So jump straight in. So this is the topic sentence. It's the point in the peer model. Um, here we go. Uh, this. So um, this is going to give us a, a limitation and explain a bit about that limitation. And here they're they're repeating how how they dealt with that limitation. That's the R point or the linking. So they're the same point. We had several limitations. Here's an example, but we're going to now explain a bit about that. And we're going to link. And in that link, we're saying, well, we, you know, there was no other way we could have probably could have uh, dealt with that or that um, it's unlikely that there was this alternative possibility. And they're, they're continuing with the theme here of saying, for example, here, an additional limitation was, was this. So was, this paragraph is going to tell us about this additional limitation. Um, so, right. They, they had a military, uh, uh, an additional limitation is they all had a uh, military service history. And um, then now this gets a little quirky. Uh, I think I'm missing something in the logic because you can see here the way they've set up this paragraph, this does not follow it at all. Um, maybe that's because the there's something missing in the way they've explained it. Maybe that's explained earlier in the article and you understand it by this point, but this is a little quirky. It may be because the oximeters were in the military and they were not commercially purchased. So they're trying to say that they don't know about the oximetry data that they're getting. I think that's what's going on. There, there's a little lack of, of clarity here, but you, you can see how uh, uh, the, the the structure is still, still kind of in, in place. So they don't have it looks like commercially available oximeters that would have given them the evidence they need so they've got a topic sentence about the limitation they're they're explaining the limitation they're giving evidence about it and they're they're linking or, or repeating or restating based on this evidence what what that means in light of the topic sentence um okay um so do you guys want to go through more examples i hope you're starting to see this come into effect i want to go through um some examples from actual students of their writing um, where lack of clarity can start to creep in because they haven't uh, you drawn upon the peer system in their own writing. And um, that, that can lead them to go into circles and feel lost and really confused. Um, but uh, yeah, do drop in if you want to look at more examples. I find it's really the best way to do this is to look at examples from different fields. I'm going to take, I'm going to go ahead and take one more from the education field. Let's do um, math teaching uh, practices, something. Um, Here's something I was looking at with uh, students. Um, okay, this is kind of a hybrid of computer science. Let's, let's look at this. Um, see if I can get the PDF. Um, and if you're struggling to see the screen, do do let me know and I'll, I'll zoom in for you. Okay, this looks good. Okay, great. Yeah, this is nice. So, okay. Um, here we go. Though, so I want to try to jump to, I'm going to zoom in even more here, and it's easier actually if I download the PDF, because then I can work with it a little more. Let me, uh, let me download this to the desktop, and then I can manipulate it and show it to you a little bit better. Okay. Nope, I don't want to open it there. I want to open it with Adobe. Okay. So I've got it. Now I've got it. Okay. So here we go. Um, so here. Ugh. Well, I want to get it to the side of the screen. So let's look at the, the, the paragraph over here. So our topic sentence the, is right here. Um, so the, the topic is promising us here is that games, uh, the, the point that games are supposed to supplement but not replace um, teachers to help students become more engaged. Um, and then your ideal, your paragraph is going to give examples and explain that. Um, so this is this is an example of one that's a little bit unclear, um, which which you can see it really doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't follow the the point here. Th this next point doesn't follow that perfectly, um, which. All right, this is this is about trying to make your writing very, very clear and easy to understand uh, for others. So it, it's it goes a little bit into talking about how kind of goes into how they can provide supplemental tasks and challenges around integration. Um, but it doesn't really get to the main point that they're trying to set out, 
of uh, this that the games supplement rather than supplant. So I'd like to see the content here. Tell me more. Tell me more about how it is that they're supplementing and not actually supplanting. Maybe it is that the, the teachers are indispensable um, and they, they actually couldn't even supplant. Or maybe um, here there, there's different ways. I'm not an expert on this topic myself, but um, uh, I, I would look at separating this out. So um, this for me here is a separate point. And this is an example where it's it's not going to be a death blow to your writing. Oftentimes, people can can follow you anyway, but it's harder. And I think if you look at this, if you read this, you're going to find you have to read this several times to understand it. Whereas you, you go back to some of the other papers we looked at that followed the peer system more closely, you find, wow, I, I can breeze through this. It's so easy to, to, to get through. And so I really... Good writing is also kind of good reading in disguise. So once you kind of be savvy in reading, and actually when you read and you spot, hey, this is really easy to read, really, really easy to follow, take note of that and try to understand why. Let me look at, let's look at another one here, impact uh, of this. So, um, yeah, so this is another example um, that the impact of, uh, of PD, the impact PD has on teacher implementation has been minimally researched. Um, however, focus group responses suggest that it would be good, and this suggests that when to best adapt. So, again, this ends up being a little bit of a harder paragraph to follow. I think I would uh, say, I think I would set this up and say that I would have set this up, topic set this up a little bit differently and said, um, although focus, although, right, there, there is a, there's emerging evidence to suggest PD would be good, but so far little research has been done. And then say something more about, because there, the, what you're probably saying here is to say that there's minimal research. So I would instead say uh, that your topic sentence is promising to tell us that there's going to be minimal research and say, well, maybe there's been research on you know um, other kinds of math teaching, but not on digital games or all this other stuff. And then and then say that there have been repeated calls to increase this research from focus groups and others. Now, sometimes um, papers will, it will will have very limited word count, and then they're going to intentionally smush some things together, realizing that they're going to lose some clarity in doing so. But for many of you, especially if you're writing a PhD dissertation or a master's thesis, you have ample space to let your points breathe, and you don't have to sacrifice that clarity to pack things into a very small space. So um, this one, uh, again, I, ho I hope you can see as you go through it that when, when you set up, when you set this up, has been minimally researched, you're priming your reader to think, okay, well, give me evidence, back up that point that there's minimal research here or that the research has been on other things but not on the digital math games as in this example um, because th these start to go in a different direction. And what does this go back to? This goes back to each paragraph needs to make one point, not not several points. And this is starting to make right. This is a point, and uh, and, and this isn't really. You can see how this uh, is not really linking to to that point of the minimal research, and that just creates a lack of clarity. So look, one thing that I hope you'll take some comfort in is that. You know, right, this would be, right, Roger Federer is going to go out and, and critique how lower-ranked players are going to play tennis and be able to give them pointers. But they're still professional tennis players, and Roger Federer can go give them pointers. Um, I'm not saying I'm Roger Federer, but I, I have published a few papers along the road. And papers will still get in print. They'll still get out and still get published, even if they deviate from these basics. But what I want for you is I want for you, at least at the very beginning, to master the fundamentals and get the system right because it's going to help you so much in your writing, help you so much to get clarity about what you're, you're trying to say, especially if the research is complicated and you're doing it for the first time. So I want to come now to some real student examples and um, show you kind of how, how some editing has played out that I was doing recently, and I've intentionally anonymized this, and um, you can see a lot of red lines. Don't worry about that. I'm going to take track changes off here. Whoops. So... Uh, so that you can see everything, and I'll be able to zoom this in a lot more. So let me go to the original, um, what the student, oh, come on, original, I want no markup, okay. And now you can see where we're at. So I want to, this is an introduction, 
um, which is often um, one of the hardest sections to write. And uh, let's look at this together and see if you can spot what some of the issues are according to the peer system. So um, if we come down here, so this is the last paragraph of the introduction. And um, yeah, can you spot what is the issue uh, with this paragraph? And let me, let me zoom in, and uh, I'll give you guys a second to see if you can spot what, what the issue is. So based on the peer system, what would you say is wrong with this paragraph? I'm uh, going to give you guys a second to think about it. There's a couple things wrong. Um, I mean, I'll I'll point out some minor things while while you're thinking about it. Like this reference um, should be at at the end of the sentence, um, among other things. But the big thing that jumps out in terms of the peer system is this is like having a hamburger without the bun. There there's no point. If the point was going to be, we included these studies. Well, there's nothing to back up or explain, including these studies. Um, and then we perform a thematic analysis for this review. This is this is kind of what this seems to be talking about is what the study actually did. So maybe this is missing. This is missing the point. This is missing the topic sentence. This missing. It's missing the bun. Um, so. That, that we need to fix that. And uh, so th that, that's an issue for this. And that, this makes it kind of, a, it's, it's not coherent. There's not a point that the reader can, can see that, that brings all this together. And I mean, you could eat a hamburger without a bun, but is it really then a hamburger? And is you would ask the same here. Is this really a paragraph? It's not really a paragraph. It's just two pieces of kind of evidence or explanation of what you're going to do in your study lumped together, but not being connected. So um, to have a topic sentence, say here, uh, imagine like this. Um, so uh, let's see if I can do this original, uh, original. So what I would put here is I would start this instead. And what would I do? Let's see if I, I can, can draw. What, what I would instead say here is say, here, we performed a systematic review on this. To do so, we looked at, we, we evaluated systematically these studies and excluded these, and we evaluated them using a thematic analysis. Now these two sentences come together if we can include that first part. Um, that would make things so much clearer. So uh, let's see if I can, I've already marked this up. And what did I do when I marked it up? Let me come back and see how I edited it. Okay, I've, I've edited this quite considerably um, to get to the gap. So I think I actually ended up taking taking that out to put it in a different section of the paper. Um, but, okay, let, let's look at some other examples and see if you can see what's going on. Um, okay, so let's look at this paragraph. Again, try to use the, the peer system to interpret what the issue is with this paragraph. And uh, let me zoom in. Just ho hope that you guys are able to see it. I'm looking across screens here. Um, so yeah, do do jump in in the text if you see how this is deviating from peer, and how this is creating a lack of clarity in the writing. I'll give you guys a second to look over it. Okay, so a lot of the issues are, are, are coming again from the topic sentence. This is an example of two paragraphs being mushed together. Um, it has two topic sentences inside of it. And it also has a problem that one of the topic sentences, well, each of the topic sentences don't really have the evidence and explanation to back them up. So I would say this is a topic sentence. Burnout happens when this. 
than this. So what is it saying? Burnout happens when educators experience this fatigue related to their work. And this is telling me that you're going to start telling me a lot about what what's kind of uh, causing burnout to happen. You're going to go in, in when and why burnout's going on. That's, that's, that, that's your point. So you're going to start giving me burnout happens when, when this is going on. Maybe you'd continue to say, right, that, you know, burnout happens when educators experience recurring, recurring physical and psychological fatigue related to their work. Um, this is, and now you're going to give evidence and explanation. You're going to say, this is not just a consequence of high workload. This is a result of an accumulation of risks uh, that, that of emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and low personal achievement. And for this reason, burnout is not me measured by a single concept like workload, but a combination of factors, something like this. But that meat is missing here. And it gets straight to the kind of, this is how burnout is measured. But that, I hope you can see that there's kind of a logic, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff missing. And sometimes what I find happens with students with the peer system is that you understand everything, and it's all very clear to you. But then when you dump it on a page, it comes out kind of like uh, spaghetti. And the others, your supervisors, your peers, your colleagues can't understand you and, and can't understand your brilliance. And so you have to kind of assemble your thoughts in a way that's accessible to others. So uh, that would fix this. Now, this point here, this systematic review aims to plug that gap of what well, this is very confusing because it hasn't set a gap, so this is misplaced. But this is this is kind of the the the, the next. This is a topic sentence, and I think I would have liked to have seen this as a topic sentence to say, well, so to plug this gap, we're going to do a systematic review in the research. By the way, while I've got the moment, while I've got you here for a moment, I'm just going to take this and see if I can get the original. I don't know if it's going to let me copy the original. I just want to make a side point just on a writing tip while I can. Um, and let's see if I can, maybe I can get this. Let me see if I can uh, reject change, copy, and put it over here. I just want to show you a, another writing point that comes up. So imagine if we set like this. Okay, there's, there's a couple key principles writing principles that I just want to cover while, since we're here, let me get rid of this comment. Uh, let's just leave this. Okay. Um, so this is also a hard sentence to understand. And for many of you who are not English speakers, I recommend that you read aloud your sentences because many of you I find can speak well, but then have trouble writing well. And you'll spot some of the problems just by reading it aloud. So, for example, if we read this, this systematic review aims to plug that gap in research by highlighting the interplay of personal and professional factors attributing to burnout pertaining to early childhood educators and determinants leading to burnout on personal and professional levels, which prevents educators from being emotionally well present and responsive young children. That's, um, first of all, uh, I mean, there's grammatical problems, so you should all get Grammarly. Um, that will help with that. But it's, it's very, very hard to follow. Um, and the reason... The reason it's hard to follow is multiple. It's long, but also because the concepts in the sentence are different points in the sentence. So imagine it's like if you're trying to drive a car in a straight line and you're going in a straight line, but just like you're kind of going like zigzag back and forth. You're like, the people in the car are going to get a headache and get lost and get dizzy and confused. Um, you need to go in a straight line. So um, how can you start putting related concepts together? Um, well, um, I, I would break this sentence up into two sentences, and this is saying this systematic review aims to plug that gap in research. Well, I haven't clarified uh, the research, so to start trying to fix this, I would actually put in to, to plug this, this gap, um, this systematic review um, aims to right, highlight this, and, and I don't think this is the right, right word choice here, the interplay of professional and professional factors um um the in i think you will just want to say risks so you can be more precise and definite in the language so we can get so we're going to move related concepts together we're going to use better descriptive uh, words when possible um to highlight the, the 
in, in, don't be fancy here. There's no need for something fancy then to play. The highlight, why don't we just say the role of personal and professional factors in, in burnout risks among early childhood educators. Um, you know, and, and this point here left a, 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 unaddressed, these risks can prevent, or, or do you want to say these risks or this burnout? But I don't think this is really necessary to your point. So you can actually maybe even take this out. Um, I, I would actually take this point out. It doesn't fit here. And if you do that, um, now you've got something that starts to resemble the peer system and it starts to be coherent. So we're going to do a systematic review. And now we're going to talk about how maybe the, the systematic review aims to do this. And we're going to include this stuff. Another point I'd like to make here is uh, I think it's easier to write um, in active voice. This is active, but I also don't dislike writing in, in first person. So to plug this gap, I, I just find for most students, they find it in, in, in grads and professors and others I work with, they find it more natural to write in a way that's closer to how they speak. So to plug this gap, um, here we performed a systematic review to do XXX. That's just a lot simpler to write. And in general, I want you guys to use active voice. Right, active voice is key, and I'm just writing here now. Right, you, you wouldn't say the, you, it's so much easier to say, for example, right, the pitcher threw the ball. But so many of you will, will write, many students, I'm not accusing any of you individually, the ball was thrown by the pitcher. And nobody, uh, nobody writes like, no, nobody talks like that unless you're a robot. And so if you're going to make that sacrifice to clarity, you need to have a reason why. So I've digressed here a little bit um, because I spotted some things uh, that I thought would be helpful for you to see on the actual writing. So the, the big flaw here is that this is two topic sentences mushed together. And it's actually, so you, this is basically, if the, the paragraph we had before was kind of the, the lettuce and the tomato and the meat without the bun. This paragraph is just bun. The, this paragraph is a whole lot of bun with, with no meat, lettuce, or, or anything, uh, any of the other good stuff in it. And what I've just shown you is we, could took, we were able to take this part of the bun in the beer and combine it with this lettuce and meat and make something coherent. And this, we, we still need to go find the meat, which may be somewhere else. Okay, guys, we've covered a lot uh, in, in a short period of time. Uh, it, it's deceptively simple, Pierre, but um, I, I really want to encourage you to start using it because when you do, it's going to transform your writing. And to conclude, I want to come back to another paper. Let's go find another paper in the literature using Pierre. And uh, I want to show you a simple test you can use in your own writing um, to see if you're effectively getting a uh, Pierre right. And, and the key to that, I don't, I'm going into my Google Scholar profile because I was going to pull up one of my papers. Um, yeah, and actually, let me go ahead and do that. Um, let me pull up something recent. Um, here we go. Let's see if I can get access to this paper. Okay. Um, right. This is going to be slow loading. It should be open access. Okay. So here we go. PDF. Come on. PDF. Where are you? Okay. So let's go through. Okay. So if you have good writing, you should be able to jump. Do a, do kind of what I call a skip test. You should be able to skip paragraph to paragraph, not read the whole paragraph, and be able to follow the structure of the argument just by reading the first sentence. So here we go. Um, there are widespread concerns that COVID could cause a deterioration in mental health. Um, it's unclear why mental health is worsening. So, uh, yep. And then, then it's going, um, yet there is... And a third untested hypothesis about government announcements of impending lockdown um, causing this. Could this could this be happening? And here we aim to plug this gap by testing this hypothesis. Um, so yeah, uh, the, so you should be able, but by, by seeing these, to to follow the argument, just what's going going on on your own writing from reading the these topic sentences. And ju just follow right there. So I want to encourage you guys to do that. If, if you can, if, if your argument is clear and has a good structure to it, 
You should be able to hop point by point, just like this, through, throughout your paper. And same thing here. Um, we designed a telephone survey. Participants of the survey were randomly recruited and, uh, and our representative. And now, right, you can see the topic is going to go through and give, give all, all that there. We had these outcome measures. Um, to better ascertain causality, we did this. Um, and really, th these are the nuts and bolts uh, of your outline. And so there's this real congruity between you having a clear outline that's point by point, one point each paragraph for scientific writing, and then the the, the rest of, of the burger. Um, so yeah, this is pretty pretty straightforward. I, I actually, for me, I'm not even fully 100% satisfied. I, I think even looking back at the introduction, it's really important to be critical of your own writing. I actually think my topic sentences that, that are put in here um, could be clearer. Um, this you can follow, but I, I would like to I would like to have made this even clearer in the argument by making say it's unclear why mental health is worsening um, why it, it, during COVID I would have probably linked that back just to just make that easier to follow um, and then here this third possibility um, here there is a yeah alternative hypothesis um, I might have I might have. Yeah, the, the third kind of jumps out a little bit from the second. But the point is, even so, those are things that could, you can kind of continue on fun this writing. You can continually make it clear, continue making it clear to, you'll hit diminishing returns. But that's the aspiration um, to keep it really simple and clear. And the point is, uh, in, in writing that you're going to find that's good and easier to follow, you can do that skip test and go right down one by one uh, in, into through your sentences. I'm going to look at one more example. Uh, let's go into another journal. Um, that's let's go to a good, uh, good. Let's go to science because science has good editing. It's very very succinct. So let's see what we've got in the journal Science and the current issue. And uh, guys, yeah, it, it, drop in the comments. Do you feel like you can apply this? Because uh, it, it's well and good to to watch me going through it. Do you think, let me know in the comments here, can you take this back with you at, ho at home, in your office, your lab, wherever you are, by yourself, and, s and start using this? Um, okay, let's go into, uh, let's go into a commentary. And here we go. This, this looks like a nice one. Let's go in here. Okay. Ah, shoot. Okay. Uh, the DOI, uh, the most recent ones might not be out. Uh, we're in science immunology. Let's see. There's, we should be able to find an open access one. Um, two seconds. Let's see. I uh, don't want an opinion. These are perspectives, and that's probably why. Well, this is fine. We'll go, go with something here. Here's an editorial. Okay. This is an editorial, but you're still going to get uh, the same kind of... This is actually a really nice um, illustration up here. Um, let me see if I can zoom. Okay. So let's go through a few examples. Um, okay. Here's, here's a pretty simple example. And, whoops, this is a simple example here. Right. In his recent book, he's going to... Right, he defends this process of weighing evidence, committing to truth. And, and it's really nice here that it goes through and says, okay, so this, is, this, this paragraph is going to be about this book. And what does he do? He, it's going to explain the author's point. And that's kind of the evidence here is that that's the meat of the burger. I'm going to explain it again. And now you've got this linking sentence. This provides you know, the, the, this three public goods here. And uh, that then is going to link us right into the next paragraph, right? Uh, truth is based on what is known so far. It's always provisional. And what does it do? It says, truth is always provisional. That's a profound statement. And then it explains it. We'll likely know more tomorrow than today and have to revise, right? It's, it's then going through and explaining this provisional nature of truth. That is the scientific method at work. 
and then um, another linking sentence here. Once the system gets facts rates, then uh, this provisional system, once it gets the facts rates, they can work constructively together. Um, here's another good example. This knowledge certifying system is under attack today. Um, and um, then goes on to to explain. So this is a little this is a little bit harder in this one um, because as an editorial, it's not really giving the same evidence for this. It's kind of making the, an assertion. Um, and, and the topic sentence here is really the knowledge it, the knowledge certifying system is under attack in these domains, and restoring confidence is key. So this is a little bit of a funny use of peer because the kind of the, these two are the topic of the paragraph, and then this starts to explain it, um, but it doesn't continue to go through uh, using the peer here. Um, that can be okay, um, uh, but it, it's, again, I think this would be a lot clearer if, um, I, I think I would have put it, I think this would have been hard to pack into one, one sentence. I, I wanna encourage you, you at, at the stage that where most of you are, especially if you've been starting with your writing, try to put it into one sentence. Um, so how could you have done that here instead? You could have said, right, this knowledge certifying system is under concerted attack today. Um, and, and, and so one of the most fundamental challenges for science is to restore uh, confidence in evidence-based messages. And then go through in the paragraph about how to defend public confidence. Um, some of this, this other stuff kind of distracts in the topic sentence because that's not really what the topic sentence is about. Now, this is a short commentary. might not have the space to do that. But I hope you can see, even being very critical here, how when the topic sentence is set up like this, it actually makes the paragraph uh, a little bit harder to, to follow and pick up very quickly. And again, I, science is all about you trying to communicate complex information in a simple way, in, in a very meta way, this whole point, this 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 whole uh, article here is about the importance of communicating evidence importantly, um, given that the truth is provisional, um, and and good writing is is so indispensable for scientists to convince the public, to convince experts, to convince others of, of the rightness of their views. And I think sometimes scientists believe, well, the facts will just speak for themselves. But um, that, that treats evidence as occurring in a vacuum. Um, and a, a vacuum that's free of power. And, and evidence alone is, is rarely uh, what was going to tip the balance of a decision or the, the weight of public opinion or weight of scientific opinion even in one direction. Um, that, that's where power is an inevitably, inevitably a part of what knowledge gets taken up. I don't want to go into Foucault as a sociologist here. Um, but um, yes, this is talking about the challenges of communicating uh, uh, messages about science. And I hope that that's a really fantastic note for us to end the session on. I hope um, this peer system will help you to communicate your science better uh, through your writing. And I hope this has given you the tools to start, to start a process, uh, a long process of steady improvement in your writing to where uh, one day you'll be at a point to where um, you'll feel pretty good about critiquing n not just others' writing, but also your own writing in a, in a very savvy, critical way. Um, it, it's not a bad thing to be your own worst critic, but you need to have some framework to criticize yourself with, to understand. And so many students I work with, when I point out that this is not clear, they have a, they'll have, sometimes have a blind spot, and at the very beginning, they can't see how it's not clear because they don't have the tools. Uh, they don't have the resources to understand that, that that was what was what was off. And again, going back to the tennis analogy, if I say, well, um, right, you, you didn't hit your forehand in the right way. Um, well, if you don't have the mechanics of hitting a basic forehand, I can't help you diagnose and say, well, your wrist was in the wrong position or you didn't rotate or pronate or do, do something in the right way because you, you don't even have the language to really engage. So um, again, this is a very brief introduction to academic writing, um, but the peer system is absolutely indispensable. Um, take home that test of the peer system to skip different paragraphs, try to read your topic sentence, and if your topic sentences are flowing, that the reader can follow each paragraph, you've probably done a good job. It's probably gonna be clear to whoever reads it. 
Then make sure in your paragraphs you make sure you you, you don't just have lettuce and tomato and you don't just have bread. Make sure that you deliver. You promise your reader a topic, a point, one point in your paragraph, and you deliver it. You deliver the the lettuce, meat, cheese, and, and good stuff that they want, and then you wrap it with the other end uh, of the bun. And that each paragraph, again, is only one hamburger and not too many smushed together. We saw examples of buns smushed together. We saw examples of just lettuce and tomato. H have a critical look at your paragraphs and see if you're falling into either of those kinds of pitfalls. Um, this is going to help you. I'm glad uh, several of you are saying you got value out of it, um, that you like the peer approach. Um, that's great to hear. And Emmanuel, I'm glad you found this interesting. And every week, every Friday, uh, with the exception of this one, because I'm traveling tomorrow, we have our live grad clinics. And it's your opportunity to get support on your research and for us to cover together some of the most common things that you're struggling with. So we'd love to hear from you. Drop me a line or the assistant in the group, Christine. Um, we're always happy to hear from you. And uh, that's what this open access community is for. So all of you guys have a uh, fantastic rest of the week. Go on into the weekend. And we will reconvene next week week um and uh do do uh, as many of you are watching on the replay i always come back and answer questions so anything you want me to pick up on um will do and uh yeah try to apply try to apply peer and let us know how you get on with it it's really inspiring to the other people in the community and in the group to hear your stories um and engaging with our systems and uh, yeah uh yes yeah, so it says see you next friday i will look forward to seeing you same place same time all right bye for now